So I do enjoy, beware the stranger. I mean, I'm nothing if not messy, right? Which like, is never a reason to buy a book, but it's like a thousand percent a reason for me to buy a book. So, <laughs> which was published, which was published, who will, who will even, why does it say for someone? There's five of them. That description was not helpful. <laughs> Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse and welcome to what is coming out in the month of September. So for one, the sweater looks really green on camera. <laughs> for two, there are a small but wonderful group of books that are coming out in September. So not as bonkers as August was, but one of my most anticipated books of the entire year is coming out this month and I can't wait. And I feel like I talk about like I'm anticipating all of these, but there's like anticipated and then there's most anticipated. So we're gonna dive into that. But a few notes. For one, I just, as I'm going through, I'm seeing that some books that I have written down for September, CJ Tudor is coming out in the UK in September. It's coming out in the US in November. I have made this misstep a few times this year with like a Lisa Jewell book where I talked about it on the UK date and not the US date. And I feel like I did it with runtime also. So I'm gonna just give you the dates that I have and keep you guys posted on what's happening. But like I say, a handful of books. I can't believe it's September by the time you guys are watching this and we are nearing the end of the year with book releases, but some of the best are saved for last. So here we go. So first up, I have Killers of a Certain Age by Deanna Rayborn. So I feel like this is sort of in the lines of the Richard Oseman series and the Marlow Murder Club series. So it says older women often feel invisible, but sometimes that's their secret weapon. They've spent their lives at the dead They've spent their lives as the deadliest assassins in a clandestine international organization. But now that they're 60 years old, four women friends can't just retire. It's kill or be killed in this action-packed thriller. So we are following Billy, Mary, Alice, and Helen, and Natalie, <laughs> and Natalie. And for years they've worked for the museum, an elite network of assassins. So their talents are considered old school and no one really appreciates what they have to offer in an age that relies more on technology than people skills. So they wind up getting sent on an all expense paid vacation to mark their retirement and they realize that they are being targeted by one of their own. Only the board, the top level members of the museum, can order the termination of field agents and the women realize they have been marked for death. So now to get out alive, they have to turn against their own organization, relying on their experience and each other to get the job done, knowing that working together is the secret to their survival. They're about to teach the board what it means to be a woman and a killer of a certain age. So this one just sounds so fun to me. I'm really, really interested in this. And like I said, it's just giving me, it's giving me vibes of books I haven't read yet, but I mentioned in my series September video, so Marlo Murder Club and the Thursday Murder Club. Are they both the same name? Yeah, Thursday Murder Club and Marlo Murder Club. So Richard Oseman and Robert Thorogood. I, I will link it down below because I know I'm rambling, but this one just sounds really fun. I love the idea of female assassins. I don't know if anybody watches Killing Eve, but I feel like this could be Eve when she's 60 years old and it just piques every little bit of interest that I have. Next up is Marple 12 New Mysteries. So these are a brand new collection of short stories featuring the queen of mysteries, legendary detective Jane Marple, penned by 12 remarkable best-selling and acclaimed authors. So in this one, we have Naomi Alderman, Lee Bardugo, Alyssa Cole, Lucy Foley, Ellie Griffiths, Natalie Haynes, Jean Kwok, Val McDermid, Karen M. McManus, Dreda Say Mitchell, Kate Mossy, and Ruth Ware are all writing short stories with Jane Marple in them. So these are all original short stories and it says it will introduce Jane to a whole new generation of readers. Each author reimagines Agatha Christie's Marple through their own unique perspective while staying true to the hallmarks of a traditional mystery. So I don't know if you guys have read the Sophie Hanna sort of continuation of the Poirot series and I found, I read one of, I wanna say there's three of those and I really enjoyed it and it definitely rang very true to Agatha Christie. So I have no doubt that these ladies are also gonna ring very true to Agatha Christie and to Jane Marple. So it says that Jane Marple was first introduced in 1927 and made her first appearance in a full-length novel in 1930's The Murder at the Vicarage. 
It's been 45 years since Agatha Christie's last Marvel novel, Sleeping Murder, which was published po posthumously, I have a hard time with words, in 1976. So this is a collection of ingenious new stories by 12 Christie devotees. And again, I just think it's gonna be really interesting. So I do enjoy the concept of these authors that I love, like a Ruth Ware and Lucy Foley taking on this. And I have seen this on radars for quite a long time now. And I also think this cover is stunning, which like is never a reason to buy a book, but it's like a thousand percent a reason for me to buy a book. So <laughs> we'll see. So next up we have The Kiss Curse by Erin Sterling, AKA Rachel Hawkins. And this is actually the second book in the X-Hex series. And I haven't read X-Hex yet. I also realized after the fact that when I did my series September books that I planned to read maybe non TBR TBR video, the X-Hex was supposed to be on it because I knew this was coming out and I forgot to mention that. So maybe, maybe that'll pop up at the end of my September wrap up for you guys. So, I mean, I'm nothing if not messy, right? So I don't actually wanna read the blurb of the second book since I haven't even read the first book yet. So I am gonna just go back a ways and give you guys a little wrap up of what book number one is about. So in this one, we have spine tingling romance full of wishes, witches, and hexes gone wrong. So nine years ago, Vivian Jones nursed her broken heart like any young witch would. Vodka, weepy music, bubble baths, and a curse on the horrible boyfriend. Sure, Vivi knows she shouldn't use her magic this way, but with only an orchard, hayride, scented candle on hand, she isn't worried it will cause him anything more than a bad hair day or two. But then of course her ex Reese shows back up in town for the annual fall festival. And it says with one calamity after another striking Reese, Vivi realizes her silly little ex hex may not have been so harmless after all. So I definitely feel like this needs to be on my series September list. Let me know if anyone's read this one. I really enjoyed The Wife Upstairs. I enjoy Rachel Hawkins as a writer and I love her sense of humor. And I just, again, listen to all the podcasts and all the writing advice. And I still need to read Reckless Girls, which is out of frame, but it's up here. But I think the X hex would be perfect for this time of year and obviously perfect because The Kiss Curse is coming out this month. So, I mean, I. Not that I've never bought a second book in a series without reading the first one, but maybe I'll try and change my ways. And then we have my most anticipated book of the month and one of my most anticipated books of the year and my only pre-order of the month of September and it's The Winners by Frederick Bachman. This is the third and my understanding is final book in the Beartown series and I can't wait. So if you guys watched my series September, you know that my plan is to reread Beartown and Us Against You before diving into this. This book picks up two years after the events of Beartown and Us Against You. So it says, everyone has tried to move on since the events that nobody wants to think about, but there's something about this place that prevents it. The residents continue to grapple with life's big questions. What is a family? What is a community? And what, if anything, are we willing to sacrifice in order to protect them? So, these books are just so incredibly well written. The language is beautiful. The stories are beautiful. They are gut wrenching. They are painful. They are hard to read. They are empowering. They are heartbreaking. I feel like I just had no idea where he was going to go with his stories, what was going to happen to these characters. It is so hard to not be so wholly invested in the stories of everyone in these books. And I was just so shaken to my core when I read Bear Town years ago. It was one of the first booktube made me do it books. It is a book that I guarantee you I never would have picked up on my own had it not been for booktube because I would have been like, oh, a book about a hockey team, whatever. And it is such a fascinating look into this town and these people and these decisions. And it is hard to not be in these books and think what would I do and also like I would never do that or I would do this instead and to really sort of kind of take a look at yourself in certain circumstances but the language the writing he is so gifted mind blown by what he does and I cannot wait for this book to come out it was supposed to come out in October and for some reason it got like bumped forward a week and I'm not mad about it so stay tuned because I am going to reread them all or reread the first two and then read this so I will let you guys know but hands down, one of my most anticipated books. I cannot wait to get pulled back into the story and to the series. So now we have A Sliver of Darkness by CJ Tudor. So I read The Chalk Man, which I very much enjoyed, and The Other People, which was creepy. And I have The Hiding Place, 
and I have The Burning Girls, but I haven't read them yet. So I really enjoyed her writing. So Chalkman was the first one that I read by her and it definitely gives that thriller horror vibe. And I know that she is a huge Stephen King fan. I know there are some Stephen King-ish vibes in her books. So I don't know with this one in particular if there is, but anyway, I am just still very much intrigued by her as an author. And I have listened to many interviews with her and I also find her very intriguing as a writer. So this is actually a short story collection and it says, the, this Halloween prepare to be terrified. A creak of a floorboard, a shiver down your spine, the feeling that you're not alone. Join a group of survivors who wash up on a deserted island only to make a horrifying discovery. Meet a cold-hearted killer who befriends a strange young girl at a motorway service station. Travel along eerie country lanes in a world gone dark. Enter a block of flats with the most monstrous of occupants and accompany a ruthless estate agent on a house sale that goes up apocalyptically wrong. Say that three times fast. 11 Twisted Tales of the Macabre from the best-selling author of The Chalkman are your perfect companions as the, night, as the nights draw in if you are brave enough. So this sounds terrifying, <laughs> as it says. And I'm curious, so I'm using the UK cover here, which has that like very creepy skeleton face on it, which has nothing to do with what I was about to say, which is I wonder if The Stranger Girl at the Motorway Station is a wink to one of her other books. I don't know, but I, like I say, I'm a fan of hers. I am not generally a short story reader, but I feel like this could be a good one that you could also like dip in and out of. And maybe if there's like a wintry readathon or Halloweeny, not wintry <laughs> readathon, this might also be a good one too. But like I said, eyes are up. Now, like I said, I'm not usually one for the short stories, but at the same time, this one is super intriguing to me. So kind of really good for this season. And I feel like if there's like a good spooky readathon, a short story might be a good way in. So like I say, you know, antennas up. And then finally, I have A Familiar Stranger by A.R. Torrey. So I have not read any of A.R. Torrey's books, but I do have Every Last Secret as an ebook, which Sarah from Sarah's Nightstand and Lindsay from Lindsay's Little Library both read and loved and both recommended it. So it's just a matter of time. I just need to get to it. But this one obviously also caught my eye. So this says, such a quiet and ordinary wife and mother. Who will even notice what she's done? So in this one, we are following Lillian, who leads an unexceptional life, writing obituaries and killing time with her inattentive husband and disconnected son. Then she meets David, a handsome stranger in a coffee shop. Oh, Lillian, beware the stranger. She is lured into an affair. She invents a new persona, one without strings, deadlines, or brooding husbands. Lillian has never felt so reckless, unpredictable, or wanted. But as her affair with David intensifies, she withdraws from everything that's real, even her closest friend. When evidence of her life as a secret lover finds its way into her son's social media, oh no, she risks ruining much more than her marriage or her reputation. As lies beget lies, Lillian's two worlds spiral dangerously out of control and, bet and betrayals run deeper than she imagines because Lillian isn't the only one leading a double life. Mm. It sounds very unpoddoutable. Again, I've heard such great things about her. She also writes as Alessandra Tori and writes spicy romances, apparently. And A.R. Tori is her dark alter ego of the twisted stories filled with secret suspense, drama, and danger. So yay, yay, yes, please. This sounds all shades of messy and I am here for it. So that's gonna do it for September. Like I said, just a handful of books, but I'm excited for all of them. But let me know, what are you most looking forward to in September? Have you had a chance to read any of these yet in the land of arcs? I have not, but let me know, what did I miss? I'm sure I missed books because you know, all the books all the time and dates are changing all the time. So let me know if I missed anything too. But thank you guys so much for hanging out. Thanks for being here. And I will see you guys in another one really soon. Bye everybody. That was weird. <laughs> Bye.